Today's saint, Saint Polycarp, was of course a martyr, and again that's why the the church has us wear the red vestments as a symbol of the the shedding of the blood that the martyr underwent. Well, he was born in a, around the year seventy, and um, to Christian parents, and he was of course the uh, disciple of Saint John the Evangelist himself. He got to speak to him and hear firsthand all about the life of our Lord, what St. John learned from him. Perhaps even he had told him about the time that that St. John rested his head on the breast of our blessed Lord and heard the utterings of his sacred heart at the Last Supper. But he heard it all firsthand, St. Polycarp did, and learned much. Perhaps, too, that's why the epistle today is read, the one that speaks about fraternal charity, because St. John, his master, was always speaking of fraternal charity. And when he could no longer, he was too old to really give a long sermon, he would just look out at his people and he'd say, little children, love one another. That's all he said. That was his sermon. He was a saint of fraternal charity. St. Polycarp learned all of that. And um, Later on, St. John actually himself consecrated St. Polycarp, a bishop, the bishop of Smyrna. And um, he was one of the, looking for the right word here, he was one of the more well-known bishops of the time. And many people went to him for all sorts of questions, and they really looked up to him because of his great holiness and great learning. But so one day he went to, to Rome to meet with the pope, and discussed the Easter question, when Easter should be celebrated. But on his way back, he defeated, he rather debated with some heretics. And along the road, a certain heretic, a man named Marcion, he came, and they came face to face. And Marcion looked at St. Polycarp and asked him, do you know who I am? St. Polycarp, knowing exactly who he was, and a man not to mince his words, he said, well, of course I do. You are the firstborn of Satan, because he was a heretic. And heresy is about the third, or second or third worst sin that a soul could ever commit. Deicide, the killing of God, the crucifixion being the worst, and apostasy, the second. What it does to a soul, you are the firstborn of Satan, then he walked on, and as he came back to Asia, his, his diocese or where he was acting as bishop, there was already a great persecution against the Christians going on. This one waged by Marcus Aurelius. And it started out this way, that he brought in 12 or so Christians from Philadelphia and had them devoured by wild beasts in the amphitheater. And this, the pagans back then in, in those areas were very bloodthirsty. For them to watch these, these games, as they called it, and the slaves fighting to death and, and all of the rest of it, it gave them pleasure. They loved it. It was a real thing, but they loved it. And when they saw these 12 Christians being devoured by wild beasts, They clamored for more, more blood, more bloodshed. And they clamored especially for the death of St. Polycarp. So his disciples, his parishioners, told him about that. And he wanted to stay because he knew he would have to watch over his flock, make sure that they persevered with great fortitude and kept the faith through the trial. But they persuaded him to leave town and hide out in a nearby house Well, he did that for some time. And then the enemies found out about, found out where he was hiding. So again, the people took him, moved him to a separate house. Well, at this time, they caught one of the servants of St. Polycarp, a young one. And he was so afraid that he betrayed St. Polycarp and told him where the new hiding place was. At this time, I presume they wanted to move him a third time. St. Polycarp just looked at his people and said, this is the will of God. He would not flee anymore. Instead, the enemies came to the house where he was hiding 
And he wasn't fearful in the least. Ulite terere, says in the Latin. Don't be afraid. Those are the words of our Lord. Don't be afraid of them that persecute you. So he let them in the door. And what do you think he did? He offered them a dinner. He fed them and told them, well, after he gave them a good meal, he said, now allow me to pray before you take me away. They allowed him two hours of prayer. It says he was in deep meditation at this point. And after he was done, he quietly got up and followed them. And the the people that had come to take him from the house were at this point so confused, they no longer wanted to do their duty. They did it anyway. They were soldiers after all. So they they took him out of the house. They took him until they met uh, some charioteers along the way, and they took him. They then told him, well, you're an old man. You should should really just spare yourself all the trouble and sacrifice to the gods. Give up your faith. He refused. And they say that they pushed him so hard into the chariot that it either severely bruised or even broke his leg. But still, he didn't let out any sign of pain. They took him to the amphitheater, finally. And there, he was brought before the judges and everything and told to give up his faith. They tried this way and then another and and another. And all the while, he refused, saying, I'm an old man. I have been faithful to our Lord, and, and my Lord has been faithful to me. He has only done good things to me. Why would I ever betray such a good master as our Lord? And so he said, then they told him they would be, they were going to send wild beasts to devour him. He said to the, the judge, he said, well, send them quickly because they will be doing me a favor, a great service. They will be sending me to my, to my God to worship and adore him forever and ever. Send them quickly. And they said, well, you're not afraid of that. How about if we burn you at the stake? And he said, my friend, I fear only one fire, and it is not yours. It is the fires of hell that last for all eternity. Those fires I fear, not yours. And so they then put him to death by by fire or tried. They had a stake and then lit the fires. And of course, not only the pagans, but the Jews. They were all too quick to jump in and say they wanted a part in this persecution. And so they lit, they lit the fire around the stake. And St. Polycarp saw the nails that they were going to nail him to the stake with. And he said, no, 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 no. I don't need the nails. He who has given me, who has given me strength will give me strength to endure this as well. So they didn't nail him to the stake. But when they lit the fire, the fire didn't touch touch him. It surrounded him. And it says that there was such a, a fragrant odor given off by his body that finally they stabbed him with a spear. And that's what killed him. They stabbed him with a spear. But so much blood poured out that it extinguished the flames all around him. But his soul flew to Almighty God. Now, this is a very beautiful story of a martyr, as so many of them are, but there's one thing always to learn from the martyr. It's not how to go on the offensive, but rather how to go on the defensive. That's the virtue of patience. Patience endureth, all things. Charity is patient, right? And patience, patience is from the Latin. It comes actually from the word passion. That's where we get it. Think of our Lord all through his passion. He was enduring, receiving all of these pains and all of these sufferings along the way and without saying a word, without a complaint, doing it all for love of his Father and love of us. He endured it all. That's where we get patience, passion, patience. It means the enduring of all the difficulties that come to us throughout the day, whether it's the the bitterly cold weather, whether it's someone who gets on our nerves, whether it's some temptation that keeps hounding us, whether it's health, anything. 
These are things that perhaps we can't change. In other words, we can't go on the offensive. We can't attack them necessarily. We must simply endure it and endure it as our Lord on the cross or Polycarp in his martyrdom. That is what we are meant to do. It's kind of like, and I hate to bring this into a sermon, but bring in a quote from a movie, but I guess it's one of the newer Rocky movies. He's talking to his son. He's given this speech. It's often used as a motivational speech. And there's something to it, although it's a bit naturalistic. But it does give a good point to consider. He tells his son, his son is always complaining because he's in the shadow of his father. His father is this great boxer. And his son was a good boxer too, but always lived in his father's shadow. And his son was complaining about this. And his father, Rocky, said, started yelling at him and saying, it's not about how much you can hit. It's about how many times you can be hit and knocked to the ground and still get up to fight again. That's the Christian life. How many times we can endure something and it seemingly knocks us off our high horse and we don't get discouraged. We get right back up and we get at it again. That's patience. And that is what all of the martyrs, without exception, teach us. So look today for all of those occasions to practice this virtue of patience. Remember always to unite it with our Lord's suffering, sort of take a nail and pierce it to the cross with our Lord and and look at him and say, it's all for thee. And by every little action that you do, you will merit a great reward and receive a great crown in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.